Hello, and welcome to another Who Done It. As you saw from the teaser, the victim apparently recognised the murderer, and as you will find out, has left a very good clue to help our panel solve the crime. Now, this week, we are pleased to welcome an absolute rotter, the cad of all cads, and incidentally, past captain of the Vaudeville Golfing Society, so let's hope he gets this one in one, Cardi Robinson. And a star of What's On Next, we shall try to make it as clear as we can this week. Thank you. <laughs> Miss Anna Dawson. <laughs> and brilliant director and actor, but is he a good detective? Who will know by the end of the show, Victor Spinetti. <laughs> and I'm personally very pleased to welcome my friend, the beautiful and effervescent Miss Katie Boyle. Now, just to fill you in before we go back to the plot, the action takes place at Little Hampton Hall, which is a school for lovers. A school where mild, meek little men are turned into handsome, passionate Casanovas by its headmaster, the ten times married Mr. Ide. I understand that Patrick Moore was a star pupil there. <laughs> Mrs. Ide, his wife, was the unfortunate victim, so now he's ready for his wife number 11, or is it life in prison? But he's only one of the suspects, as the constable who's just arrived on the scene is about to find out, as we return to A Date with Death. Now, a murder has been committed, and, I presume, by the open safe, a robbery. Correct, Constable, my poor, beautiful wife. It was a terrible shock. Uh, yes, sir. Now, may I ask what sort of a school you run here? It's quite the talk of the village. Yes, Constable, I call this a school for lovers. These gentlemen enter the portals as meek, mild nobodies, and they exit therefrom as suave men of the world. I see, sir. Panky panky up at the oars. <laughs> now, was the wife helping you out, sir? Oh, yes, indeed. The dear lovely woman kept the books. She was the most meticulous person in the world. She had a mind like a computer. If only we knew what she was trying to say when she tore that out. March the 17th, eh? Well, maybe she was going to write on the back of it. <laughs> anyway, let me make sure I got your names down correct. Call them out, I'll tick them off. I'm Mr. Bull, pupil. I'm Mr. Ram, pupil. <laughs> Mr. Leo, <laughs> pupil. I'm Miss Fish, games mistress. <laughs> Mr. Patrick, pupil. I'm Miss Crab, junior mistress. I'm Miss Virginia Calendar, senior mistress. Oh, yeah. A calendar? <laughs> now, that might be a clue. How dare you, constable? All right, then. Now, stand back, stand back. Good Lord, that's our new domestic, Miss Philby. She's only been with us for a week. All right, Constable, I'll take over. Uh, who are you, sir? <laughs> or madam, as the case may be. I am an undercover agent for the Serious Crime Squad. <laughs> My ID. Oh, right, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, may I ask what happened, sir? Well, I was going through this desk when suddenly I was hit on the head from behind. Then I was bundled into that cupboard, and I'm afraid I've only just come round. Well, you better sit down, sir. You look a bit pale. I'm afraid it's bad news, sir. Mrs. Ide is dead. Stabbed with this paper knife, which I found behind the curtain. Then she tried to write a note stating who her murderer was, but unfortunately her pen ran out before she could name her killer. But she managed to tear this out of the calendar. March the 17th. All right, Constable, I'll take it from here. Well, I have learned quite a lot about you all from the observations that I have made while posing as a domestic. I really do think you've got the most dreadful nerve. Now then, Mr. Bull. Yes, dear boy, you wish to ask me a question? Yes, you, Mr. Bull, have done time as a con man. You thought that this course would give you a new personality. Well, I must say that the Noel Coward voice is a big improvement on the Cockney one that we're used to down in the East End. Smart Alec, ain't you? Still, it's no crime to try and better yourself, is it? No, but theft and murder are crimes, but committed by whom? That's a very good question, sir. I think you're on the right lines. Well, it certainly <laughs> wasn't me. I was practising voice production in the garden. What about Mr. Ram? 
The inveterate gambler. You've got quite a lot of losses to make up, haven't you? I could sue you for defamation of character. Well, if you had one, I'm sure you could. <laughs> <laughs> ah, perhaps Mr. Patrick, the ex-mercenary, would make a good subject. Now then, just before I was hit on the back of the head, I heard the village clock strike three. Now, it's a very loud clock, so I'm sure you all must have heard it. And as the murder must have occurred within a few moments of that time, perhaps you can remember where you all were. Well, I was on my bike at three o'clock, developing my thighs. I can distinctly remember Miss Fish starting me off. We must put a little bit on your thighs, Mr. Ryan, if we're going to attract the ladies. Not that you're not attractive as you are. The wig that Mr. Ide recommended does wonders for you. Oh, thanks awfully, Miss Fish. Uh, tell me, it is quite undetectable, isn't it? Oh, right. Now, we'll set the manometer to zero, and I want you to do 15 minutes at 10 miles an hour. And it's just coming up to 2.50, so start now. So, I pedalled away. I heard the clock strike three. And just as my time was up, I heard Mr. Ide call for help. Help someone, quick! His study was just down the corridor. The milometer showed that I'd covered 2.5 miles, and my watch showed that it was five past three. And as I said before, when I heard Mr. Ide call for help, I ran in here. Who was in here when you arrived? Mr. Ide and the late Mrs. Ide. Oh, and Miss Fish. I heard Mr. Ide call out. I was in the cloakroom across the hall. May I ask what you were doing in the cloakroom, Miss? Changing my bra. We girls have some drawers in the cloakroom. And my bra was in my drawers. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you hear anything when you were rummaging in your drawers? No, sir. Didn't you hear a cry for help? Well, I sing a lot, and when I sing, I can't hear anything else. I see. I think whoever opened the safe must have done the murder. Right. No, I opened the safe with my skeleton key, and inside the safe there were a lot of notes, quite a few thousand pounds. Someone must have seen it through the open door. But who? Well, obviously I'd. It's common knowledge his wife held the purse strings. He was desperate for money. When he saw the chance to get rid of her, he took it. Probably didn't intend to originally, but when he hid behind this curtain, she found him. So he stabbed her. I wouldn't. Not my own wife. If I needed money, I would have asked for it or used my own key. But Mr. Ide, you were only allowed to open it in the presence of Mrs. Ide. You were frightened to death of her, so you had to make it look like robbery. Your days are numbered, Miss Callender. If he didn't intend to do it, why did he have the knife with him behind the curtain? I'll ask the questions, Constable. <laughs> if he didn't intend to do it, why did he have the knife with him behind the curtain? <laughs> I was just offering a theory. I demand to know what you expected to find in my safe. I found exactly what I expected to find. I found this. Ooh, <laughs> do you keep your handcuffs up there as well? <laughs> this is a composite picture of your pupils. <laughs> this picture together with this letter, have been sent out to ten lonely spinsters. The letter guarantees that whichever one of you these spinsters choose as their ideal mate, you will fall in love with them immediately. As soon as a wedding takes place, the old dears will send £5,000 in cash to Mr. Ide. The money in the safe is evidence of the scheme's success. I had something a little more attractive in mind when I took this course. What a lot of old bags. I haven't perfected my James Mason manly stare for the likes of these. <laughs> Suppose I told you that you had already been chosen, Mr. Leo. You are to marry a Miss Nickerson. Top left. She's old enough to be my grandmother. <laughs> well, she's only 75, and she's so grateful that she sent a cash check as a deposit. <laughs> you see, I must remind you of something very special that you have all overlooked. Part of this course includes hypnosis. 
We've all undergone it to give us confidence with our new personalities. Ah, yes, but what you don't know is that when you boys are being hypnotised, your headmaster here flashes a picture on the wall of the old dears and you are brainwashed into believing that they are your ideal mate and it's bingo at first sight. Ergo, which means however. Therefore. <laughs> however, any one of you could have been hypnotized into murdering Mrs. Ide and then stealing the money from the safe. But who? <laughs> Welcome back to part two of Who Done It at the School of Love, where the Ed's wife has just been done in. Now, a leaf from the calendar dated March the 17th was torn out by the victim and left as a clue. Now, is that Taurus? The suspects include a Mr. Ram, a Miss Crab, a Mr. Leo, a Miss Fish, and a Miss Virginia Calendar. I wonder where she fits in. Well, as you can see, it's a nice, simple affair that Mr. Sherlock Holmes could have solved while putting on his carpet slippers and lighting his pipe. But can you? Let's rejoin the plot and find out. Let us recap the facts. I open the safe and I find the envelope and I find evidence of a fraud. Then, either by chance or by design, an intruder comes in, knocks me on the back of the head and steals the money from the safe. Now then, Constable, where exactly was this knife found? Just there, sir. Where the blood is on the floor. Right. The would-be murderer hid here and was found by Mrs. Ide, who was then stabbed. Ah! Oh! Oh dear. Oh. oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Then she tries to write the name, but unfortunately her pen ran out. I was just getting to that bit. <laughs> ah. oh. Then she tries to write the name, but unfortunately her pen ran out. But she knew who it was, so she abandons the pen and she takes out the date, March the 17th. Now, if she wanted to indicate a sign of the zodiac, why did she pick the 17th? Why not pick a date in the middle of the zodiac sign? There Therefore, the number 17 is very important. Maybe the murderer's birthday, sir. Miss Crabb, if I am to believe her, is only 17. Could that perhaps be a clue? I was nowhere near the study when the clock struck three. I was in the garden. Helping Mr. Leo with his projection. Oh, that is absolutely true. We were in the arbor when the clock struck three. I remember because I had a break in my concentration. Did you see anyone else in the garden? No. I was practicing my James Mason manly stare at the same time as I was projecting. And my eyes never left Miss Crabbe's. Mr. Bull. Where were you when the clock struck three? Uh, my dear boy, I was practicing my dancing with Miss Callender, and I must say, she's extremely light on her feet. I was really getting the hang of it. You're doing terribly well, Mr. Bull. Under your guiding hand, Virginia. I was never terribly good at dancing. I was always a shy child and rather retiring. But at this moment, as I dance with you, it brings out a sort of madness in me. A madness that I find hard to explain, but it's terribly, terribly exciting. You bring out something strange and wonderful in me, too. If I were rich, my dear, you would be just the sort of girl I'd run away with. We'd go somewhere madly tropical like Rio de Janeiro. Oh, sorry, darling, was that your plate to meat? <laughs> Three o'clock. Lesson over, Mr. Bull. How is it coming on? He's getting very professional, Mrs. Ide. Good. I'm just popping next door into the study. I must say, those lifts in the shoes, Mr. Bull, give you just that bit of extra height that makes all the difference. You'll have no trouble fascinating the fair sex when you leave here. I'm sure you'll soon find a mate. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Virginia? Well? About that advance I gave you on your wages. Uh, you, you obviously have something rather personal to discuss, so I'll just uh, pop to the cloaks. Shan't be a tick. 
So I went into the cloaks, which is opposite the study, but the door was locked. Oh, so it was you banging and shouting, was it? I didn't bang. I merely turned the handle and pushed, the matter being a little bit urgent. So I nipped upstairs and used the one on the landing. <laughs> was the study door open? I really can't remember. I was rather preoccupied at the time. Miss Callender. Yes? <laughs> How long did Mrs. Ide stay with you talking? Oh, not very long. She went after a few moments of moaning about... about paying back some loan. Headmaster, where were you when the clock struck three? I was looking for Mr. Patrick. I went up to his room on the second floor. He wasn't there. So I came down to the study and I found my wife. I called for help. Everybody appeared, including Mr. Patrick. Now I come to think of it, he came in either last or last but one. Yes, that's right. Where were you, Mr. Patrick? Well, I was hungry. I'd been at the other end of the house, having a sandwich in the kitchen. I had a snack. And a drink of milk. And I was just catching up on the news when I heard a call for help. I remember passing the exercise bike in the passage, but I didn't see Mr. Rao. Yes, I remember now. Mr. Ram came in behind me. I didn't come in behind you. Yes, you did. I most certainly did not. You came in behind me. Now, that's not true. Look here. Uh, no, 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 none of that. <laughs> when you were in the kitchen, did you look out of the window and see anybody in the garden? Because anyone escaping through this window would have to go round to the back in order to get in again. Unless he used another window. <laughs> I don't remember looking out of the window. Oh, dear. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Who are you? I'm Miss Nickerson. I had an appointment with Mr. Hyde because he had a gentleman he wanted to introduce me to. Ah. Who is this beautiful creature? <laughs> I don't know who you are, but are you by any chance single? At the moment, yes. And, and, and you are Mr. Leo, your adoring swain. Oh, this is so sudden. Shall we step into the garden for a bit? <laughs> Delighted. <laughs> Shall I follow them, sir? No. He's been hypnotised into believing that she is his sole mate. I didn't believe that malarkey, sir. But if he can hypnotise them, then he could easily have hypnotised one of them to kill his wife and take the money. I'm afraid it's curtains for you, Mr. Hyde. If you've got a particular patron saint, I'd start praying to him. That's it! That's explained it exactly. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Wasn't all that difficult. And thank you, Mrs. Hyde, wherever you are. Right, we now have the suspects here in the studio, but before we start asking questions, I'm going to ask each of our panellists to choose a replay of the action to help them solve the crime. Katie, now what would you like to see again? Uh, I think I'd like to see uh, Mr. Patrick going into the kitchen and, and um, uh, going to the fridge, doing sandwiches and going to the fridge, because I want to hear something in the background. Right. Victor, what would you like? I'd like to see when they discover the cleaning woman. <laughs> The, the policeman in the cupboard. Right, when the detective is discovered in the cupboard. Yes, Anna? I'd like, like to see the bit where Miss Fish is teaching Mr. Ram on the bicycle. Thank you. And cardio? Oh, forgive me, I put my glass on my eyes on what they used to be. <laughs> <laughs> used to be my knees. <laughs> uh, I would like to see the same as Miss Dawson, if you don't mind. I would also like to see, for psychological reasons, I'd like to see the bike. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> While we are finding those clips, we'll have one question from each of the panellists. Katie, what about a question? Um, Mr. I, you've been married ten times. Um, is there any reason for this? <laughs> well, I have been divorced several times without rancour. 
death has intervened on other occasions. <laughs> I didn't know the police were keeping count, actually. Um, uh, had you any idea that there might be another wife um, coming along no. who had no ulterior no. motives on... No. no. Thank you very much. Right, yes, Victor. Miss Fish, I could I ask you about Mr. Leo's projection? I mean... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm rather confused. Vocal projection. You were teaching Mr. Leo vocal projection, is that right? I'm in charge of games. Who was teaching vocal? You were, Miss, uh, so sorry, Miss Crab. Yes. Um, it, does he project very well? Uh, he, I was, he was learning well. Some distance? He was on the way. Got a good carrying voice? Yes. Thank you. Yes, Anna? Mr. Ball, how tall are you without your lifts? Um, five foot three and a half. <laughs> so that's uh, another extra two inches, if you were, if you're wearing them. Something yes. like that, yes. Something like that. Thank you very much. You've got to clear who Mr. Yes, Ball is. Yes, God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, um, Mr. Uh, Ide. It, it is Ide, isn't it? You've dropped your H. Yes. I don't want people to think I'm ignorant, you know. <laughs> 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 um, I'm interested in your school, naturally, because I, I went to a very good school. I was sent there by a judge. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a large curriculum? I mean, I can't tell from here. <laughs> The, the curriculum I can manage and the pupils I can manage, I frequently have trouble in handling my staff. There's no answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll pass on back to you, Katie. Uh, yes, I would love to know, Mr. Philby, what were you doing? Why did you take on the job as a domestic in this um, school for lovers? Ah, well, I was undercover, you see. Ah, yes, yes. but uh, Mr. Ide had asked you, is there, was no, there any No, no, it was advertised in the local paper and uh, we thought that was the best way of getting in, you see. Oh, you felt there was something rather odd about the place. Well, I didn't, but my superior did. Ah. Uh, uh, thank you. Yes, thank uh, you. Thank yes, you. Anna? Mr. Howard, did anyone dislike your wife enough to kill her? I can't think of anyone who would want to murder her. So, she was very popular and nobody really disliked her, or...? I can't think of anyone who'd want to murder her. <laughs> 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 yes. Point taken, sir. <laughs> yes. Right, we're ready for the first replay. This is for you, Victor. And here is your replay, as requested. This is the bit where Detective Philby of the Yard is found in a cupboard, bound, gagged, and dressed as a woman. I'm surprised the police are asking for a rise so we can have this sort of fun. Look at the screen. <laughs> All right, then. Now, stand back. Stand back. Good Lord, that's our new domestic, Miss Philby. She's only been with us for a week. All right, Constable, I'll take over. Who are you, sir? Or madam, as the case may be. I am an undercover agent. Yes, Victor. All clear? Well, I wanted to ask that because I'm... It's just cupboard love, really, for a <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, I was just wondering, are those regulation policewomen's knickers? <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I would, I was, I just wanted you to flash your ID again to, oh, I wanted to make sure that I, the, <laughs> I don't think we'll have him I couldn't, no, I couldn't see that badge, you see, I was wondering then. Oh, it was yep. definitely an ID. It was a, yes. a, a, an authentic badge. Absolutely authentic, wasn't it? Yes, I yes. can vouch for that. He can vouch for that. I can't vouch for the knickers, but the <laughs> <laughs> Yes, thank you. Cardio. Yes, you're a bit of a good voucher, really. I am, can I come back to you, uh, Inspector Philby, or can I call you Phil? Uh, you know the transvestite that is, of course. That's a man who makes love in a singlet. <laughs> I, uh, are you in the, uh, in the habit of, of uh, wearing women's clothing? Certainly not. Oh, uh, is that why you're not wearing your high-heeled shoes now, but only your slippers? It, I'm wearing my slippers because, between you and me, I don't know how they walk around in those things. <laughs> my feet were killing me. A likely story. I think that's a reasonable answer, Cardio. I mean, after all, the, the detective was impersonating a domestic, and sure. domestics have been known to walk around in slippers. Yes, Victor. Miss Callender, are you single? Yes, I am. Marry me. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I would, I would really like to ask you. Um, you, you are single. I am single. Uh, you studied dancing. I mean, obviously, you're not short of dates, but... Sorry, um, yes. <laughs> but yeah, where did you study dancing? Were you a dancer before? Uh, no, I wasn't. I was a kept lady. My boyfriend got rid of me, so got I had to take this job. Yes. May I ask, uh, have you ever known, did you know, Mr. Patrick, may I just Yes, of course. Uh, did you know Miss Callender uh, before you came to this school? I mean, you just met her the first time? This was the first time I'd met her. 
Miss Thank Nicholson, you. may, may yes, I please, ask a question? Yes. Uh, weren't you rather surprised when Mr. Leo uh, suddenly felt that you were the one girl in his life? So suddenly? Well, it was jolly nice. <laughs> I, I tried to get a man for a long time, and it was jolly nice when somebody actually did. And you see, I had seen his photograph, because that had been sent to me. And, and I thought, yeah, I thought he was uh, smashing. I thought that was oh. all right. Yeah. So you came here specially for him. Yes, yes, I do see that. So I'd like to eliminate you from my uh, suspects at the moment. Is that, that all Fine, right? Fine, please. Yes. Consider, yourself a, consider yourself properly eliminated. I all right. Really there is a buzzer for the next replay. Uh, this is for Anna and you, Cardio. You both asked for the same flashback, where Mr. Ram, with the undetectable toupee, pedals ponderously on his push bike. So pay attention, because you're getting one for the price of two. Keep looking. It's on your thighs, Mr. Ram, if we're going to attract the ladies. Not that you're not attractive as you are. The wig that Mr. Ide recommended does wonders for you. Oh, thanks awfully, Miss Fish. Uh, tell me, it is quite undetectable, isn't it? Oh, quite. Now, we'll set them along. I can't quite see how that would help you, but still, did it? Oh, yes, I know where only wise goes now. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Anna? Did it help you? No, I just want to see if the bicycle had a crossbar. Ah? Because it could be crucial. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> or painful. <laughs> yes, it quite. Miss Fish. Miss Fish yeah, is, Katie Boyle, yes. Well, Miss Fish is dressed in bright green. I have a feeling she might be a red herring all the same. <laughs> um, ah. uh, I'd love to ask Mr. Bull. Mr. Bull, um, what made you uh, enrol in this uh, school? I mean, really? Uh, well, you see, um, I really needed to, uh, shall we say, make progress in my career. Uh, my career had come to a sort of halt, really, and I felt that I needed a new personality to uh, make my career more successful. Yes, did you know Mrs. Ide as well as uh, Mr. Ide? I mean, did you, did you know them both as a couple? Or I, I knew you, them only as... You uh, just wrote, I see. ...the people who were in charge of the school. I see. Yes, yes Cardio. Mr. Ide, come back to you, sir. Did I hear a right? You've been married how many times? The police say ten. <laughs> you mean you've got ten mother-in-laws? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what I want to ask you. I don't want to be personal about your late wife, but uh, did you really love her as much as you gave the impression in public of so doing? I mean, you were quite fulsome, weren't you, about her? I mean, you, she was uh, practically a, a living computer. She was a living doll. Well, a dead doll now, but I mean, <laughs> she was everything that a woman is. Were you laying it on just a little bit thick? My dear late wife was a difficult person to like. Uh, I succeeded for a lot of the time, but not all of it. I see. Yes. I see. Yeah, Victor. Yes. Um, Miss Crabb, did Mr. Ide ever hypnotize you? Not that I know of. Ah. He never brought you out of your shell. Excuse me. Well, well <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mr. We, we knew that he was hypnotizing the pupils. Well, I know his so brother, you know, Mr. Ide's brother. He was my headmaster. He was called Tanya Hyde. That one. <laughs> <laughs> Another transvestite, I presume. <laughs> yes, Anna. Mr. Philby, why did you wake a, wait, wait a week to open the safe? Ah, well, I wasn't too sure where all the clues were, you see. I see. Now, this key you had up your knickers. No, uh, it's round my neck. But didn't you have it up your knickers? No. What did you have up your knickers? Ma. Now I'm something else. <laughs> Could there... <laughs> That's a good place to keep it. Could there possibly have been a duplicate key made of that? Uh, of this, no, it's yes. a skeleton key, you see. Uh, you said you were uh, Sorry, ah. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yes. There mm. is the buzzer. Katie, this is your flashback. You asked for reasons best known only to your lovely self. You asked to see Mr. Patrick going to the refrigerator. Uh, perhaps you're curious to see what sort of snack trainees lovers need to keep their strength up. <laughs> keep looking, will you? I had a snack. And a drink of milk. And I was just catching up on the news when I heard a call for help. Yes, Katie, it's all yours. Uh, yes, well, I, I wanted to find out because I wanted to know whether there was the sound of the music, the bell, and the scream for help, whether the three things happened while he was going to the fridge. But I would love to know, Mr. Patrick, why a man as uh, prepossessing and good-looking, if I may say so, as you. Uh, what would make you come to a place like this? I'd have thought you could have got 
pulled all the birds you wanted, I believe the expression is. Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Setting that modesty apart, of course. Well, I served in the regular army in Korea. I was taken prisoner, brainwashed. And uh, when I came out of the army, I found that I'd lost my, lost my confidence. confidence. I see. Uh, so you were very happy to be hypnotized, were you, by Mr. Ide? Oh, yes, yes. I quite like the girls here, too. Uh, you like the good things in life in general, don't you? Oh, very much, yes. Have you by any chance been short of money since you came back from Korea? No, no, I made quite a lot of money. So there's no need for you to um, have an eye for a quick... Oh, not at all, no, no. No, no, you, you find the bills are perfectly easy to pay here. Oh, yes. I see, thank you so much. Yes, Anna. Mr. Patrick, could you stand up, please? Stand up? Yes, please. Yes, please. Quick, Mr. Patrick, up you get. Thank you. Nothing to do with the play. I just want to see his legs again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Anna. <laughs> All right. Here we go. <laughs> right. P.C. Dickey. Yes, Cardio. Oh, M oh sorry. Oh, Miss Callender. Oh. Uh, do you have any special qualifications to teach? <laughs> Only two. <laughs> oh. oh, Bristol University, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, Katie. Uh, Mr. Wright, do you have any lady pupils in your school? I mean, not. No, no, we, we tried that several times, um, but it proved very difficult domestically. Oh? Um, with your wife? Would, would yes, she have yes, been th jealous? That is what I imply. Uh, she felt I mishandled the situation. Rather I'm sure you did. <laughs> I can well believe it. Yes, Victor, you have a question. Uh, yes, I, I wanted to ask Mr. Ram. How many miles did you say you cycled? Uh, 2.5. 2.5. You weren't sweating. You must be very fit. Very. You are. And why did you come to this school? You... Uh, as a boost to my confidence. I see. He's physically fit, but uh, mentally perhaps a little lacking. Ah, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Miss Callender, just remain seated. It's perfect. You don't have to stand. Up. Yes, Katie. I would. Ah, there goes the bell. I'm oh, sorry. No. no more questions. I'm uh, sorry. We have no more time. Possible. Would you now, panel, like to write down who you think did it, and any clues that you may have spotted? No, 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 and for you at home, and for your eyes only, here is a vital clue. And to assist you, it might help you to go and get your diaries out. Panel, you should have brought yours with you, but it's too late now. I didn't believe that malarkey, sir. But if he can hypnotise them, then he could easily have hypnotised one of them to kill his wife and take the money. I'm afraid it's curtains for you, Mr Hyde. If you've got a particular patron saint, I'd start praying to him. And for those of you that haven't broken your necks by falling down the stairs to find a diary, I hope all is now clearer. All right, can I have your card, please, card you? Hmm. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you never know, you never know, Victor. Have confidence, have confidence. All right, please. Uh, let's see who you think did it and why. Uh, Katie, who did it? Well, now I'm oscillating between... I could um, feel it from here. You did, you did. <laughs> I thought it was obvious. Now, I'm oscillating between Mr Patrick and Mr Ram. It must be one person, Katie, Well, I'm going to have to stick to... Uh, Mr. Ram, although he might have lied, Mr. Patrick, about having all the money in the world, but you, Mr. Ram, lied, I think, uh, about three o'clock, and the music had stopped, I think, when they were dancing, and they said three o'clock, and instead it was going on. Then you get very peeved about who was coming into the room first, whether it was you or, or Mr. Patrick. Uh, your name is Mr. Ram, and... Um, I think, I think that is Aries. Thank you. There, I'm afraid I must stop you. We have 25 it seconds for each. I'm so sorry. Panelist. Yes, Victor, who did well, it? Well, I, I, I felt that about Mr. Ram, but I've come down and uh, I think it's Mr. Patrick, because it's St. Patrick's Day on the 17th. That's right. And also Miss Fish, because she's Pisces, and that's also in the 17th. And I think they're in cahoots. Mm -hmm. I think, in fact, they're brother and sister or some sort of relationship, and they've come down here to break the giant wide open and steal the money. Thank you, Victor Spinetti. Ooh. Yes, Anna Dawson, who did it? Well, I think it was Mr. Ide, because he was being blackmailed by, by Miss Callender, and Mrs. Ide came in, and went to, when she went behind the curtain, 
she obviously knew, it was a sort of wifely way, she said, what are you doing? I mean, it wasn't somebody she knew very well. You know, I mean, like, like one of the rest of the school. And also, I think it's something to do with the Ides of March, but I don't know when the Ides of March or whether there's a special 17. date. Thank you very Is much it? indeed, Anna. Yes, card you. Well, at first I thought it was Victor Spaghetti. Cause I was <laughs> <laughs> but actually, been I had a bit of luck because my daughter Linda's birthday is the 19th and I know that March the 17th <laughs> is St. Patrick's Day. So I thought it was old Patrick there. And why he should be stuffing himself at three o'clock when they must, old Hyde, they must give him a, a decent lunch. That was a, a load of baloney. He's stuffing himself with that food was going out of fashion. And he's got no mercenary work now. There's no mer mercenary work about now, except in Argentina. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I think Patrick. Thank you very much. That's what they think. Yeah. We will now find out if you are right or if you are hopelessly wrong. Have confidence, Anna. Will the real whodunit or dunnits stand up, please? There he is. Yes. Good. Let's take a last look at the legs because you're not going to see them for some time. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, Card. You're dead on the button. Half right. Half right. Splendid. Well done and thank you very much indeed. Excellent panel. Right, for those of you who still haven't worked it out, here are the clues. March the 17th, as everyone now knows, is St. Patrick's Day. And that was the clue that Mrs. Hyde left. The guilty Mr. Patrick also indicated the correct curtain behind which the crime was committed before it was pointed out to the assembled company in the room. Now, how could he have known that unless he'd committed the murder? He also lied about being in the kitchen when the clock struck three because we know that the clock didn't strike three until the end of the record. He said that he'd heard it before the record was playing. Well, he couldn't have done, the lying devil. <laughs> anyway, I didn't like his moustache at all, did you? <laughs> Next week, the action takes place in a photographic studio where a lady's body is found in a trunk. She's been killed by an arrow from a crossbow. Crossbow? Could that be an angry lover? Find out in Under the Arches in next week's Who Done It. Meanwhile, I'm going home to practice my Paul Newman stare. Good night. <laughs>